I said that I wanted to do a wrap up every month this year and I fell behind on my goal but I want to make sure that I wrap up every single book that I read this year so let's do a catch up wrap up The last time I did a wrap up was in June and then I read so much in July and August that I kind of just forgot to like film wrap ups. So today I'm here to remedy that and I'm going to be wrapping up all the books that I read in July and August. So it's two months worth of reading and reading in the summer where I did a lot of reading. So buckle in. In July I read 18 books. 18 books. <laughs> that alone is a lot of books. So we're going to go fast through this. I also read 18 books in August. So... We have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to discuss. So the first book I read in July is The Blood is Love by Karina Hale. And this is and this is the sequel to Black Sunshine. And this is a paranormal vampire romance. We follow Lenore who thinks that she's like pretty normal. But then on her 21st birthday, she's kidnapped and finds out that she is the daughter of two vampires and was adopted by two very famous vampire slayers and things from there there is a relationship between her captor and her and it was a really great captive captor relationship and the sequel was also really good i gave it four stars i thought it did a really good job expanding the world and of course we have the continued chemistry between salone and lenore and i love seeing their relationship continue to blossom like in the face of everything that was going on and it was overall just a really fun paranormal romance if you are in the market for some vampire smut. Next, I read It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This might be my new favorite Tessa Bailey book. I literally adored it so much. It's a Schitt's Creek inspired rom-com and we follow Piper who basically is like this rich spoiled girl in Hollywood and after like getting arrested her stepdad is like all right you're gonna go to this small seaside town in the Pacific Northwest and like run your deceased father's old bar so her and her sister go up there and here she meets Brendan who's like a no-nonsense sailor and it's their relationship it was perfection like I could not put this book down I read it in a day five stars like it is probably one of my like new favorite romances it is like a rom-com but definitely on the spicier side for what i've seen for you know these characters on the cover cartoon art covers things got really steamy but like i just love these characters chemistry and like the whole grumpy sunshine thing but also piper learning her self-worth and coming into herself was just like amazing and i just love this book so much Next we have Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley and this is a standalone sapphic YA book and look at all these tabs like I loved it. We have Tamsin who's the most powerful witch of her generation but she has been exiled and so she is living on her own with and she's cursed so that she can no longer feel anything and so she like goes around doing favors in exchange for like taking their love for someone else so when Ren's father falls ill she wants to hunt down the witch responsible for this like plague and so Tamsin will do it in exchange for Ren's love for her father and things go from there. These characters go on a journey. I gave it five stars. I just loved it. I love how like this was definitely like an opposite to track romance and Tamsin is just obviously so closed off because she has literally lost the ability to feel whereas like Ren can be like very naive and it's these two girls on their journey and just seeing them like come to care for one another was just so amazing and it just gave me all the feels and it was a really cool magic system as well like these witches like lived in their homeland and you have to like if you know that you have like a magical ability then like you go to their school and then Ren is something known as a source which means that she can't like practice magic but she is like a conduit for the magic so like it makes her really powerful because witches can like pull from her as a magic source so it was just really amazing seeing these two girls work together and I just adored this one. Next is Your Dad Will Do by Katie Robert. If you've watched any of my wrap ups in the recent months, you'll know that I'm a Katie Robert stan. It's her Touch of Taboo series, which is a series of short novellas. And this is basically about a girl whose boyfriend cheats on her. And so she ends up getting with his hot dad. And it is what it is. It's probably like the most like 
smut heavy book that I've read just in terms of the fact that the plot not really there the smut there it's short it's sweet it's dirty I ended up giving it four stars if you're a fan of Katie Robert I think you'll like this and if you want something that has just a touch of taboo I definitely suggest you check it out next I read the duology um, fable by Adrienne Young um, I don't have a copy of fable because Maddie's gonna send me the extra copy that she has but here is namesake and I was just in the mood for pirates in July and this duology delivered on the pirates. We follow Fable who basically has been deserted by her father to this island of thieves where she has to learn to survive and she like dives for gems and that's how she makes a living on this like ruthless island and then one day when she like senses that she's in danger she kind of goes to this trader's ship that she like always trades her gemstones with and like begs her passage and then their adventure goes from there it was just twisting and turning with all like the family drama and politics i gave both of these books five stars i just like loved the world and the pirate setup the pirates were so so fun like i was like i want to read about pirates and, and i read this duology and i got my fill of pirates it was amazing and we follow this crew of the marigolds and they each have such like their unique personalities and stories and i love west and fables romance too but also like the family relationships in here are just like really like meaty and like just are very central to the plot and really pull at the heartstrings and that's something i've noticed in all of adrian young's books is that her themes really lie around like familial relationships and I feel like that's always like a really strong part of her books and it always just makes me emotional when I read about them. So yeah, if you're looking for a pirate book, this is the duology for you. Next, I read Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. And this was a book that like I had been obsessed with this cover ever since it was revealed and like I just couldn't wait to read this and I was not disappointed. I ended up giving it five stars. Follow Shiori who is a princess with her six prince brothers and she's living her life in the kingdom except she's hiding the secret that she has magic when magic has been outlawed however on the day of her supposed betrothal to a man that she does not want to marry she is kind of exposed for her magic and so her stepmother banishes shiori and turns her brothers into crimson cranes and if she speaks a word the crimson cranes will start to die and so shiori is separated from her brothers and does not have the power to speak and so she must set out on a journey to find her brothers and try and get them turned back into humans um, as well as to gain the ability to speak and in this time she may just experience some help from the man that she shunned as her future husband i loved it i just thought like the everything about it was so cool like i love the world building the twists and the turns there were some like really deeply emotional plot elements that i did not see coming and it just gave me all the feels and i just felt like i was swept up in this magical fantasy and uh, there is going to be more books in the series and so i absolutely cannot wait to read them so this is where the madness begins. I saw that Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon was really popular on TikTok. So I said, I want to be part of the trend. I want to know what's going on. I want to get the jokes. I want to get the memes. And I was like, okay, I'm going to sit down, dedicate a weekend to Ice Planet Barbarians and see how many I can read. I read four in that weekend. And then I kept reading them. And that's part of why I read so many books. So I read Ice Planet Barbarians, Barbarian Alien, Barbarian Mine, Barbarian Lover, Ice Planet Holiday, Barbarian Mate, Barbarian's Prize, Ice Ice Babies, Barbarian's Touch, Ice Planet, and Ice Planet Honeymoon in July. And I'm going to continue on with the series. There's like, if you count the Ice Home series, which is like a spin-off series, like 36 books, I do want to eventually read all of them because like i actually was surprised by how much i liked the books um and i ended up i'm just gonna say like for the series like a blanket four stars i was gonna be like i can't even re rate this because it's like a guilty pleasure but i think i'm just gonna give it four stars like across the board um there are definitely some like couples that i like more than others but like i just think in general like uh, that's just my enjoyment level of these books like they're just really fun so what happens is these women are on earth and they are all 22 years old and they are abducted by aliens and they don't know like the name of the species of aliens so they just call them the little green men and basically something happens to the ship and they are dropped off on this like ice world and the first novel follows georgie and she's kind of like the de facto leader of these girls and she heads out into the ice planet and from there she encounters vectal who is the chief of the saki and 
basically he like mates to her so it's like a faded mates type story and so he like wants to obviously take her back to his people because his tribe is like running out and there's like not a lot of females and they're basically gonna like die out and they are living like basically like barbarians like in caves and all this stuff and the women are brought there and it's like they all kind of like pair off into different mating pairs and like yes i know it sounds ridiculous it is ridiculous but it's a lot of fun and i loved it and like i loved getting all the jokes too that was fun but like overall these aliens are just like big and sweet himbos because when they are mated to a woman they will do like anything for her and i love seeing like the various challenges that some of these couples had to overcome um and i thought that like ruby dixon did a really good job of like going into the fact of like living like a barbarian like all the chores and all the things that you have to do to keep the society running and like the language barriers and things that would persist between different couples so i just really enjoyed it i do have a whole vlog where i read the first four books so go check it out if you are interested in like seeing my experience live but yeah i haven't picked one up since july since like i've been busy with reading other things but i am gonna go back to the series because yeah i can read like one in a day and i just want to know what happens in all of the books because i love getting invested in a series and reading the whole series and then I have one more book for August, and that is Twisted Games by Anna Huang, and this is the sequel to Twisted Love. We are following Bridget, who is a princess, and it's a princess and bodyguard romance, and I loved it. Um, princess Bridget basically thinks that she's like the spare, and then her brother abdicates the throne, but things get complicated because she has feelings for her bodyguard. It was spicy spicy it was everything that i wanted in a bodyguard and a princess romance it was touching and like i just loved it but like so good i definitely need to read more princess bodyguard but also i don't know if anything can top it five stars so i feel like i actually got through my july books pretty quickly i'm like trying to go quick because i have a lot of books to get through so now let's go into the books for august oh so in august i read having the barbarian's baby which is a novella so count that with all the other Icelandic barbarians okay so the first book that i read in august was a ya fantasy and that is the queen's resistance by rebecca ross we follow brienne who's grown up in this house where you can basically kind of like major in one of the five passions and she wants to be a mistress of knowledge um however like when the time comes for a patron to choose her she's left without a patron which is like the worst thing that can happen in like training to have a passion um but then a few months later this disgraced lord comes and says that he will sponsor her and be her patron and she basically gets like embroiled in a plot to overthrow the northern kingdom and like restore the rightful queen um i gave this book four out of five stars i thought it was really great the writing very lyrical very nice I do feel like the plot was a bit slow at some points, but besides that, like I really liked digging my teeth into this world and the school aspect was pretty cool. The romance in here, definitely slow burn, definitely not at the forefront, but I did think that it was like very cute. And what I liked about this book in particular is that we are following a character that is not the chosen one, but is like on a journey to help the chosen ones, kind of like adjacent to the chosen one. And I feel like so often books are about the chosen one. It was really great to see a, a journey highlighted for someone that is like involved in the plot, but is not like the actual central character to the plot. So I thought that it was really smart and really well done. And there is a sequel that I need to read. But what's interesting is I felt like this book could have been a standalone because it was wrapped up very nicely. Next, I read A Lady of Rooksgrave Manor by... Catherine Moon and this follows Esther who basically like is this maid and she gets brought to the Rooksgrave Manor to, to basically be like a sex worker for monstrous men and this is a reverse harem and so she like has all of her clients and all these men that grow to love her and I ended up reading this book because they made a TikTok about it where like saying that it got removed from Amazon because it was like too spicy um and that TikTok like somehow went viral so like it's the only one of mine that's ever like gone viral um so I was like I think I need to read this book now I ended up giving it three stars it was just like a spicy spicy ride and like she had some like really fun and interesting chemistry with all of like the different men that were in her harem and it was just like really overall very fun 
um, and very like sex positive. Like Esther was a woman who's like, yes, like I like to have sex and like didn't feel ashamed about it, even though like society, you know, said that she should feel shame. So I enjoyed all those aspects of that book. And if you're looking for something like very, very spicy with like monsters, check it out. Next, I read Defy the Night by Bridget Kimmerer. I actually had an arc I have now since gotten my finished copy, but look at how pretty it is. And this, in this world, there's basically like this plague ravaging the kingdom. Tessa is doing all that she can, like as an apothecary, to try and help. Um, there's this moonflower that will help cure the plague patients and like you take it every day to like avoid getting the plague however there's like a distribution problem because like the wealthy can afford more of this flower and the like section of the kingdom that exports the flower is like raising the price more and more because like this leader is very greedy and so there's a lot of politics at play and tessa and her best friend wes like every night are stealing moonflower from the rich and giving them to like those less fortunate and like the outskirts and so it's very risky for them but when something unthinkable happens it sparks tessa to basically storm the castle and demand justice and from there and what she finds inside makes her question of whether the kingdom can even be saved also like look at how shiny this is um i gave this five stars i really loved the world i thought the politics were very intriguing and very well thought out and it's such like a complex and interesting situation also like the main plot twist in this looking back i don't know how i didn't see it coming but it makes a lot of sense but i don't know how i didn't see it coming but then after the main plot twist i was like oh that makes sense however loved it thought it was like so expertly well done just like gripping book that was really thought provoking and I loved the romance. I loved the romance. The romance was so good. It was so good. Like you could just feel the love between the characters, but like all the angst surrounding them. Ugh, loved it so much. Chef's Kiss. Definitely one of my favorite books of August. So after that, I read a a romance trilogy which is the cinderella trilogy by Kay webster which is stroke of midnight prince charming and the glass slipper and i ended up giving this whole series like four stars i want to say overall i gave the first one five stars second one four stars and the third one four stars so the premise of this series is essentially that we have this super rich guy and um ashley is working like as a maid in his office and like she doesn't clean it thoroughly so like um, when he calls ash to reprimand her and like to his office he like decides he's gonna offer her a new job instead that he will pay basically to humiliate her like sexually and that's how their arrangement starts and there's lots of like family drama and intrigue because this is part of like the midnight dynasty world which is like a world by a bunch of different romance authors basically focusing around the constantine family and the morelli family in new york so yes I love this trilogy. It definitely has some trigger warnings for sexual abuse and family abuse. Very, a very steamy, very hot to read. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, give it a shot and give it a whirl. So after that, I was like, I want to read more of the Midnight Dynasty books. So I read the Heartless trilogy by Jade West. And unfortunately for me, so this is Heartless, Soulless, and Relentless. And unfortunately for me, the series was like a solid two stars. I did not like it as much as I love the Cinderella trilogy and this one we are following Lucian Morelli who's like the head of the Ruthless Morelli clan and Elaine Constantine who basically like in the beginning of the series is like really dealing with a lot of like childhood trauma so like there are some very like he heavy themes of like sexual assault um drug abuse and like self-harm so please like just be aware of that before heading into this book but like Lucian Morelli was just like so unfeeling like I could not believe that they like had any chemistry because i felt like he was like a psychopath and then later on in the series when he like has feelings for her it's like a switch and all of a sudden he's like she's the light of my life i will do anything for her and i just didn't believe their love story i didn't like really feel their connection and so like i like wasn't as like emotionally invested and like the steamy scene just kind of fell flat for me for that reason because i just didn't buy it Next, I read How We Fall Apart by Katie Sow, and this is a dark academia thriller set in an elite boarding school. 
um, following Nancy Liu, who is shocked when her former best friend goes missing and is later found dead. And then someone online, known as the Proctor, is framing her and her friends for the crime and is posting all of their secrets. So I ended up giving this book three stars. I really liked the academia setting of it, and I really, and I really think like you know the author said that. Like there's so many stories like this that are all focused around like white people and I wanted to write one for like the for Asian representation and I think that that's like a really strong message and I feel like this book really really like delved into the like intense academic pressures that are specifically seen in Asian cultures um and I enjoyed like learning about that more from her perspective but the part where this book fell flat for me was the mystery because it just wasn't that shocking um i wish it wasn't like a mystery thriller and more of like just a dark academia book because i don't know like i just felt like the mystery like wasn't super gripping to me but i did enjoy like all the academia like settings atmosphere and like kind of like those those discussions that were had next i read forbidden fling by cat taylor and this is basically another like this is a novella and this is Katie Roberts like other pen name and this is about a girl basically like her boyfriend can't satisfy her and like is ignoring her while she's on like a vacation with him and all of his friends and his dad and so she sleeps with his dad. I think so from there it's like so short I don't really want to give it a rating but like if you just want something short spicy to the point check it out. Next, after reading and Defy the Night, I was like, I really need to finish a Curse of Dark and Lonely trilogy. So I read A Vow So Bold and Deadly. A Curse of Dark and Lonely is a spin on Beauty and the Beast, um, where we follow Harper, who is transported from modern day Washington, D.C. to the land of Emberfall. And basically, Ren has to find a girl to fall in love with him by the end of August, autumn, or he will turn into a beast and like time will reset itself. And they're just cursed to kind of continue this life on a loop until he can break the curse. And then in the sequel, we follow Gray, who is his bodyguard as he sets out on his own journey. And all four characters, Harper, Ren, Liamara, who was introduced in the second book, and Gray kind of come together in this concluding novel. And I end up giving it five stars. I just thought it was like a really solid conclusion to the series that started out as a Beauty and the Beast retelling but expanded beyond it. And I really enjoyed that we got to see how all four of these characters' storylines converged because it kind of was like each book was really more focused on one of the other couple. So it was really great to see like all of them in this story. And I just thought that they were like really again kind of very similar with like divide the night very heavy like political themes that were really interesting to explore and also like a lot of like family relationships to navigate oh i forgot to mention i read the sea witch by katie robert and queen takes rose by katie robert um which is five and six in the wicked villain series i ended up giving them both four stars i thought they were really solid installments in the world we have the sea witch follows ursa alaric and zuri and what i appreciated about this one was this was a throuple where like the woman was the dom that was in charge of the relationship and i feel like that's not necessarily portrayed a lot in like literature erotic literature you know and then we have queen takes a rose which is her, her sapphic book which is aurora and malone and again i just like adored all of them like i just love katie roberts stuff i'll pretty much read everything that she puts out so there you have it. Next, I read Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. And this is a, a bully romance um, where we have Misha and Ryan who are pen pals from the time that they're little. Um, even though they only live like 30 minutes from one another, like they decide like they're not gonna look up one another on social media and they're not gonna meet in person. They just wanna preserve their friendship as it is. However, one day Misha meets Ryan at a party and realizes that it's her. Um, but she doesn't know that it's him. And then when he meets her in person because he transfers schools, he's like really disappointed in the person that she is. It's not the person that she is in her letters. And he has a lot of like anger over that. And he like tries to provoke her to like be that person that she is in the letters. And that's kind of like, they're both like mean to each other. Like it's not necessarily like bullying. Like he's just bullying her. Like they're equally mean to one another. I ended up giving this five stars. I loved it. If you think you can get past the bullying aspect, um, which I don't think it's like something to get past like it's just like they have a lot of like emotions of anger to work through and I enjoyed reading about like how they like came together despite like all the angst and the obstacles like it is so angsty but like so steamy and spicy and I just adored it I definitely need to check out more Penelope Douglas I have read Credence by her which was an absolute miss for me so I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this but everyone has said such good things about it and 
I was not disappointed. So then from there, I was like, I need another like romance that I feel like it's really popular. So I read From Lukov with Love by Marina Zapata, who is about a Jasmine who's basically like on the last legs of her ice skating career. And we have even Lukov, who is basically her frenemy enemy and they've like always disliked one another but he's like this world championship paris skater and jasmine's paris partner has pretty much like abandoned her for another woman he basically gives her the chance of a lifetime to be his new paris partner and things go from there and she's like i don't like this dude but i like you know obviously want to win championships and like to really have a shot at like my career being good and it, this is their story and it is the slowest of slow burns the slowest of slow burns like don't go into this book expecting it to be like spicy spice everywhere like it is slow burn but the emotional build-up is so worth it like i was just so emotional reading the story seeing these two characters come together like I just loved it. It was so good. Slow burn sports romance is where it's at. So obviously I gave it five stars. Next, I read a novella, which is Games We Play by Dana Islay. And this is basically about um, there's a gamer dude who's getting interviewed for a gaming magazine. And he basically is like, do you want to spend the night together with the woman that is interviewing him? And it's very like kinky and spicy and five delicious chili peppers, five delicious stars. And those are all of the books that I read in July and August. I feel like I have been talking like at such a high speed to try and get through all of these books, but it's worth it. Um, I really read like so many good things this summer and I've just been like in such a happy mood to be reading. Like I just want to be reading constantly, honestly, because I love books, you know? So that's all. Let me know if you've read any of these books down below. Your thoughts, your thoughts on my thoughts. Let's just communicate, you know? Let's talk in the comments. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Have fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.